Hello, and welcome to Unabridged, the weekly podcast where teachers take on books. This is Sarah. Join us for bookish episodes and a monthly book club pick. This is Ashley. Find us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Unabridged Pod, or go to our website, unabridgedpod.com, where the books we read are linked for purchase. This is Jen. Check out our Teachers Pay Teachers store, our Patreon page, and our newsletter. Please rate, review, and subscribe on Apple Podcasts to support us. You want opinions about books? We've got them. Hey, and welcome to Unabridged Teaching Tidbits. This is teaching tidbit number 13, and this is Ashley. Today, I wanted to talk with you about Canva for educators. So Canva is a graphic design program. It can be found by going to Canva, C-A-N-V-A dot com, and you can create an account. However, what I wanted to talk with you about today is specifically the educator's account. So I'm going to share a little bit about Canva to start with, about what it is and some different ways that I use it. But then I also wanted to highlight their educator's account, which is a new program this year and is something that's available to K-12 through educators and is something I believe is well worth the time for you to sign up for. So I just wanted to share about how much I'm loving that and why I think it's useful. So as I mentioned in the beginning, Canva is a graphic design program, and I think what is so remarkable about it is that you can create custom graphic design images for any platform, and you can do that very quickly. In a matter of seconds, sometimes you can create and download a finished image that looks polished and professional. So I love that about Canva. I also love it for students. I think there are so many opportunities to use that for projects. It can be used as a complement to a large project that students are creating. It also can be a way of communicating information on its own. It doesn't have to be fit into a larger project because sometimes we just want students to have a visual way to share their information or their ideas, and Canva is great for that. It also gives kids an introduction to how graphic design works, but in a way that is very accessible for beginning users. And so one of the things I love about it is that you do have the ability to layer, to customize your size of your images, You can layer things on top of each other and bring things to the front or push them to the back. You can change the transparency of an image. There's just a lot of concepts that are really good for students to learn as far as how to create a visual image. And you can do all that really quickly in a program like Canva. One thing about using Canva in general, though, is that you'll find that a lot of the images, designs, and templates are paid. And so there's The program is free to use, and there's plenty that you can find that is a free image or a free template, and you can use that and download it for free. So I did that for years and years and found a lot of success with it, and I've done that with students. However, as I mentioned in the beginning, now there is an educator's account, and if you sign up for that, you have free access to all of the pro templates, images, and designs. And so that has been amazing for me. So I signed up this past winter, pretty early on in the winter, and it has just been transformative for me. So I just wanted to share that tip today because I think that even if you work with secondary students and you're not planning to create a class, which is an option in there for educators, even if you don't want to take that route and put students into your class, you still benefit from the educator's account because of the unlimited access to so many more things within their program. And so that's why I wanted to encourage that. And all I did when I signed up, I will put the link in the show notes for how to sign up for the educator's account. And when I signed up, I just took a picture of my badge and that was sufficient. So it seems a little bit intimidating when you look at the application, but it was very quick to do and I was able to get access. And as I said, even though I work predominantly with secondary students and would rarely need to put them in my class. The thing that I thought was so powerful is the way that I could have access to so many more templates, even fonts and things like that, that are often in the paid version you have access to. And I think that's powerful to show to students as well, because again, it's nice for them to see a full functioning graphic design program, and this gives them more access. There are things you could share with them if you wanted them to create from a template, but also just when you're creating materials to 
use for your students, it's nice to be able to have access to more templates that look more professional. And so that's been a big gain for me. A few tips for using Canva. These are just some things that I've learned. If you search in images and not just templates, you can get a lot of great images that are free for you to use. They're copyright free, they're attribution free, and you are allowed to use them yourself. And so that's a great conversation to have with students and also good for you to know if you're creating things and putting them out on the web. And I have found that while there are great templates on Canva, which I often use for things like the bookish fave on our unabridgedpod.com website. I more often use a blank background for something like a flat lay for Instagram, and then I will find an image within their photos that I like, and I will adjust and crop that image to fit the square. And then I find the book cover and place that on top and adjust it so that it blends into the image. And so I found that to be really successful and I think that it's powerful for students to see that we are able to create those digital images that give a cozy picture feeling, but aren't always created by using props and your own camera. And so I think that's really cool as well for students to see. And finally, you can do animated images. They have templates for all kinds of social media things. So again, there's endless projects that can be done and created for students. Uh, They can do PSAs, they can do character profiles, they can create a story. I mean, there are just so many different venues that students can pursue and create graphics for. And so I think that's really powerful. But again, all you need to do is go to canva.com. There is a specific link for educators and I will put that in the show notes. And then if you sign up for that, I got approval very quickly through my email and then found that it was well worth it to have that full access. Finally, if you click into the show notes, you can see a quick slideshow that has some examples of things that I've made in Canva and has a little bit more information and some links to access Canva and the EDU application. So I hope that's been helpful for you today. If you have any questions, as always, you can contact us at unabridgedpod.com or you can find us on social media and we're happy to answer any questions and to help you with any of the teaching tidbits that we suggest. Thanks for listening. Listening. Do you have comments or opinions about what you heard today? We'd love to hear them. You can find us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Underbridge Pod or on the web at underbridgepod.com for a list of ways to support us. We'd like to thank Jared Featherstone, who composed our theme music, Strings of Light, and Katie Amy of Amy Photography, our podcast photographer. Thanks for listening to Unabridged. 